Hi, good morning or good afternoon. Um, today we're going to be looking at the word love throughout Psalm 119. And uh, the Hebrew definition for love um, in, throughout the psalm is to have affection for, um, love, like, or a friend. Ha have, have a friendship. But I also want to read the Webster's um, definition of the word love. And it means strong affection for another arising out of kinship or personal ties, affection based on admiration, kindness, or common interest, warm attachment, enthusiasm, or devotion, the object of attachment, devotion, or admiration, unselfish, loyal, and benevolent concern for the good of another, a person's adoration of God, the, fa the fatherly concern of God for mankind. So I like the Webster's definition. Um, this is an older version of, of Webster's. Um, if you want a definition that lines up more biblically, you'll want to use an older version of Webster's dictionary. But it mentions our relationship with God and God's relationship with us. Um, it also says in 1 John that God is love. And so God has an affection for us. Because he loves us and he has created us. Likewise, because he first loved us, we should be loving him um, for who he is, for, for everything that he's done for us. And so our love for him should be something that grows and grows um, as we learn, as we meditate, as we do these things. So the first verse we're going to be looking at is verse 97. It says, Oh, how love I thy law. It is my meditation all the day. So when you think of loving something, you have that affection, you have that desire. Um, you're going to be thinking about that person, right? Um, so often we say, oh, I love chocolate. Oh, I love this dessert. You know, and but when you think about what love truly is and how it should be expressed, um, you know, that's from human to human, really, and from us to God. And so, when you love something, or if you love God, it's not going to be hard to, to think about Him. It's not going to be hard to think about all your blessings, and who He is, and what He's done for you, because you love Him. And then in verse 113, it says, I hate vain thoughts, but thy law do I love. Okay, so this word vain means to be double-minded or to be a skeptic. A skeptic is somebody who is doubtful or unbelieving. So the psalmist here is saying, I hate vain thoughts. I hate that I'm double-minded or, you know, things that, you know, you're kind of wishy-washy, right? And so, but yet he stands firm that God's law or God's word is what he loves. And so, again, are we kind of wishy-washy in our love for God? Does it go up and down? James says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. But Jesus also said in John, um, if you love me, keep my commandments. So we kind of know how much we love God by how well we're following him, by how by how well we are keeping his word, right? So vain thoughts would be anything of doubt, of unbelief, that's not in God's word, that's not aligned with what he has given us already in his word. And then in um, verse 165, it says, Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Um, when I learned this verse a few years ago, I was just kind of like, taken aback by it really because you know how easily are we offended you know sometimes really easily and yet this verse is saying that if we love God's law we're not going to become easily offended okay because we're not looking at what's being done to us we're not looking at you know how people are acting towards us or even reacting toward us what we're looking at is God's law. And so if we want that peace, which I've talked about earlier in describing other words, if we want that peace, 
it comes from loving God's law. And loving him means that we're going to be focused on him. Um, Colossians 3, which I've mentioned before, set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. So spiritually, all of this is a mindset. Okay, where where are our thoughts? Where are our mind? Where is our where, where is our mind? Right. So, how much do we love God? My love for God can definitely improve, and you know, daily, my love for God can improve and grow deeper. And I pray that that's a desire of mine. I pray that that is, that will be a desire of yours. That your love for God will grow deeper, and the more you're in His Word. The more you learn his word and meditate on his word, your love for God will grow. So you can't have you can't you can't love God without first knowing him, and you can't know God without knowing his word. So be in his word. Let this be an encouragement for you to grow in your love and to continue to be in his word. And as you meditate upon this word, you look at these verses, because um, there are several more than I didn't go through um, throughout the, this week, throughout the next few days. Um, just consider how much you love God and ask God that you would love Him more. Because when we ask God for these things that we're, we're talking about, God is going to bless and God will give. So, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind. And until next time, you have a good day and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.